Hello, I'm Emma Hammett from First Aid for Life and OnlineFirstAid.com. Today I'm going to talk to you about mumps, measles, scarlet fever and hand, foot and mouth and explain what these are, um, how to avoid them, how to recognise them and what to do if you have them. It's a very short, sharp guide on the video, but there is a, um, a really helpful uh, blog post as well to accompany this, um, which will give you all more information. So mumps and measles have recently um, been having a revival, unfortunately. So with the vaccination levels up, we began to show a marked drop in measles um, in particular. However, unfortunately, there has been a drop in, uptake, in the uptake of MMR and consequently that has led to more people catching measles. It's slightly different with mumps because you can still catch mumps even if you have had the MMR. Now, um, the MMR gives you about 98% um, cover from measles, but in terms of mumps, it's not quite as effective. It's pretty good, but it gives you about 85% immunity. And that's why it is possible for you to still get mumps, even if you've been vaccinated. Now, in terms of mumps, there has been um, quite a dramatic increase in mumps, particularly in students. Um, and university students uh, recently, Nottingham, Hull, um, uh, various other universities have suffered um, quite considerably Cardiff as well. Um, my son's at Newcastle, he certainly had um, quite a few friends who've had mumps as well. And the issue with mumps is it's a droplet infection and it's passed on with coughs, sneezes, saliva, so kissing, um, sharing drinks and living in close proximity will make you more likely to catch mumps. And mumps can be caught at any age. It was historically always sort of far more of a childhood um, disease. But at the moment, the majority of people developing it are at the sort of student teenage level. It is still hitting all the different age groups as well but the majority are in that, that sort of adolescent um, and slightly older range. Now, unfortunately, that can lead to some quite serious complications. So what happens with mumps is it affects your glands. So you get the classic sort of hamster look um, with the gland swelling under your ears um, and in your neck. But you also get swelling um, in, in your, the testes and in the ovaries. And that can be very, very serious. It can be extremely painful, but it can also um, lead to very long term um, complications and, and possibly sterility as well. Um, it can also um, uh, and lead to complications uh, such as pancreatitis and viral meningitis. So it is a nasty disease. Generally, um, when people get mumps, they will make a full recovery and make a recovery pretty quickly. Um, it's really important that they are using decent hygiene and being sensitive to the fact it is a highly contagious disease and making sure that once the symptoms appear that they are not sharing and living in as close proximity. Um, with all the diseases I'm going to be talking about, please don't rush down to your GP surgery. If you need GP advice, phone the receptionist and explain that you think you might have measles, mumps, scarlet fever or hand, foot and mouth and they will either arrange for a hand vis uh, home visit or they will arrange a specific way for you to come into the surgery which reduces the risk um, to other people, particularly at risk people such as pregnant, um, pregnant ladies and, and um, people with suppressed, um, um, their suppressed immune systems because um, for them it is a very serious illness or any of these can be very serious. So what you will tend to get with mumps is joint pain, swelling um, of the glands under the ears, side, uh, side of their face and, and as again before and the, the testes and things, they will feel pretty sick, they may have a raised temperature, so you need to give them painkillers, um, encourage them to drink um, a lot of um, water and rehydrating fluids um, to rest 
Um, and they may want a soft diet because they may have quite a soft, um, quite a sore throat. And again, that sort of advice stays true with all these diseases that I'm going to be talking to you about. Um, the rest, increased fluids, painkillers and um, painkillers as well that will help bring their temperature down and, and a soft diet. And they should all be self-limiting, although you must get medical, medical help quickly if you think you're developing any of the complications. Right, measles. We've all heard of measles. Measles is coming, um, making a comeback, unfortunately. Um, it is a horrible disease. Um, again, self-limiting and just a bit irritating for the, the majority of people. But if you get complications with measles, it can both be life-limiting and life-changing. So um, serious complications from measles um, can lead to very, very serious uh, consequences, which is why um, vaccinating is so important. Um, if it, particularly if it affects your lungs or your brain, um, then it can be extremely life-changing. So it starts with sort of cold-like symptoms, a runny nose, sneezing cough, have red sore eyes, which are classically sensitive to light, um, a very raised temperature, and it can start with the small grayish white raised spots inside the, the cheeks. That's a very classic um, measles sign. Um, and then they turn into a reddish brown blotchy rash, which can occur all over the body. Um, again, as I've said before, rest, increased fluids, um, soft diet, painkillers. Um, contact your GP if you feel you have to, but there is nothing that they can give you in order to help you get, or your child get over measles. So please don't rush into the surgery because actually there isn't anything they can do unless you are seriously concerned that they are developing complications, in which case get medical advice quickly. Scarlet fever, um, again, it's another one of these ones, starts with flu-like symptoms, a raised temperature, swollen glands, a rash on the chest and the tummy, which is pinky red initially, a bit looking a bit like sunburn, and they can very often have a white coating on the tongue. Again, they will feel rotten, they need rest, they need increased fluids. If you think they're getting complications, get help. Slap cheek starts with a rash on the cheek as though they have been hit. Um, and then this rash quickly spreads to their body. They end up with a headache, sore throat, raised temperature. Um, it can easily be confused with the others. And again, it's another self-limiting um, illness, childhood illness for most people. And hand, foot and mouth starts with sores in the mouth and a sore throat. Um, they can get blisters on the palms of their hands, the soles of their feet, and on the buttock buttocks and their genitals. It's nasty. All these diseases make you feel pretty rotten. But with all of them, increased fluids, rest paracetamol or ibuprofen, and soft foods um, will help them get better quickly. Um, on our other site, or there's links in our, um, within our blog, about exactly how long you should keep people off of school with any of these, as well as with advice on, on diarrhea and vomiting and all other elements, about how long you should be keeping them off school or nursery if you are worried. So we've got a whole load of information that's linked through on this from Public Health um, Agency, um, the Health Protection Duty Room, um, outlining exactly what you should do. So stay safe. Um, Please prevent getting any of these in the first place with really good hand hygiene. It does make a difference. So wash your hands, wash your hands when you've been on public transport, when you've been out and around. Um, if you're unwell, cover your nose and mouth if you're coughing and sneezing. And um, if we all do a little bit more of that, then hopefully we will all stay weller for longer over this winter period. Hope that's been useful. That's Emma Hammett from First Day for Life.